know, we're just like regular people. We're not like punks. Like we're not trying to fuck with anybody anymore. Like yeah, we did do that, you know, when we were when we were younger. But now we just want to make like interesting music that people like. It's kind of like a legend for us that like we sort of were kind of friends, but not really friends, and we didn't have any like aspirations. I knew Damien and Sandy just from shows and since I was, you know, 15 or 16. Josh, when he joined the band, was probably 12 or 13. I don't remember, we just knew Jonah like tangentially somehow. None of us were really good at anything. Yeah, it just came together as like a project more than like any kind of like social thing or like thing that was for fun. Mike had this idea to start this most dysfunctional band possible, like to pick people that deliberately would not get along and had uh, decided the name Fucked Up, which was very apropos for the band. Us releasing singles was Mike's idea because he was really into like, I guess like doo-wop singles, like, you know, Northern Soul singles and stuff, and like having this like, uh, this familiar aesthetic, like just being repeated over and over again. In particular, we started focusing on early LA punk which is highly aesthetic, highly tailored, really conscious of itself. Um, and then we look at Black Flag and we notice that they had a logo and Articles of Faith had a logo and all the great bands had logos. You know, we look at like The Abused from New York and be like, wow, The Abused had this like obscure feel to them. Like you don't really know too much about them except for this grainy photo. So let's just try and make ourselves as obscure as possible. You know, you'd have a song and then the lyrics would sort of be like very simple and then the artwork would match the lyrics so like you put out these like s real singles right we realize it's not just about the music on the record it's about everything about the record it's about the way the bands present themselves In any band, the, the singer is the focal point, and in our band, it's like, you know, the, the focal point. And so it's kind of been this weird thing where, like, as he goes further and further out, the rest of us can kind of, like, move further and further back. And in some ways, that just means that, like, it gives us lots more time to, like, focus on writing stuff or focus on doing whatever else needs to be done in Fucked Up World. Okay, everybody, spread out, and I want you to run this way. This way. The live show is an integral part of Fucked Up. You have to play live. People want to see you play live. It's like, you know, release as many records as you want, but prove it to me. I think live, it's just about going out there and, and if people leave and if they don't enjoy the show, that's fine, but like you want them to leave feeling that they didn't waste an evening. At the show, at least, we'd rather be like entertaining than interesting or like respectable. You know, you feel versatile if you, if you can do one thing in the studio and then it can, can become something else when you play live. On the album you realize like how anthemic everything is and it's just, it's so big and it's just so, there's so much focus to it. They're not a hardcore group, you know, they're, they're it's like they're like the E Street Band with a hardcore singer. It's easy to just try to like piss off your fans when there's like a thousand of them in the world. When you're trying to actually write music that like people are going to be interested in outside of like the hardcore ghetto, you can't really do that anymore. I think we got we got like a bit more serious about certain things and let a, let some other things go. We've just like been able to carve out all these different spaces where we can you know, write kind of any song we want and like we have a place now for it to go. You want to do something honest. For, for us it was like writing these songs that were kind of like the way we were going naturally and not trying to force it and try and write the same record over and over again. I really enjoy that we, we've been able to sort of do what we want and that people like it. It is fun to travel around and it is fun to make records but it's not fun to do the same thing all the time. We're not a punk band anymore, like we're not a hardcore band anymore, but a lot of people, like everybody else thinks that we are, so what can we do? And we just sort of like, started fucking around and like, it kind of opened up the box a bit for us, like it pushed out, pushed, pushed the walls out a little bit. David comes to life it's kind of the culmination of 10 years of fucked up learning how to be a band and be songwriters. Well, we've had this David Iliad character for a long time in the band. We wrote the song David Comes to Life and David Christmas and David's Plan, which is like 
kind of been more and more about the story of this like amorphous character. The idea to do this record was came came a long time ago, and I feel like one of the things that put it off is that we didn't we were like afraid of thinking about the lyrics and the story. So like we all, we got to the point where like a lot of the music was recorded like in the studio before you even started writing lyrics. This was like one of the most unique records I've ever done, just because it's it's not sectional. They don't record like this is the chorus part. Now put me on another track, I'm going to record the verse part. They all are very prolific guitar players. I mean, Mike in particular, he will, in the course of one take, play a rhythm part, a lead part, then another rhythm part. You basically have every single part for the song done in like three passes through the song. We would start taking things and making little repetitions out of them, changing them, changing the chords a bit, changing the theme. So if something was in major originally, maybe it's in minor now. We started writing things at different tempos. This is the first full length I, I've been a part of, so I was trying to you know, give as many ideas as possible. I think they got in there. Tempo-wise and, and, um, and arrangement-wise is sort of a pop album in, in the way that, you know, that Fucked Up would make a pop album. There's a, there's a very conscious, conscious effort to create something cohesive and self-contained. They kind of didn't change themselves to make a concept album. They, they made the notion of a concept album come to them. David comes to life. So let me see if I can get this right. Here's the story. There once was a town called Birdsdale Spa, UK. Well, there's a guy named David Eliad. He's young, he's working in a light bulb factory. David's a guy who's stuck in this dead end job that he hates. And he meets this girl. Veronica and she is a rabble-rousing commie, or anarchist or something. In a horribly unfortunate uh, terrorist attack or something, we don't, do, who knows what happens. There's a big explosion and the girl dies. He falls in love with the girl, the girl dies, he meets someone else. And then it gets convoluted. <laughs> he sets up, he comes up with like this big diabolical plot. And uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how it ends. No, 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 sorry, that's wrong. Is uh... It's basically a tortured story of, I don't know. You know what, I honestly don't even know. It's not really about the details, it's like the story, you know, it's like just like a typical love story. Losing something and then going through the, tri the tribulations of figuring out how to get it back or to be okay with it. It's all about him wrestling with the, with the fact that he's lost the woman that he loved. Even though he's hit the lowest low, there are cycles in life and that things will start again and that he actually can be capable of, of being happy. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's like, a, like a simple, ho hopefully like nice love, lovey-dovey thing. And everybody goes home with a smile on their face and they're hearing slightly more damage. I, I really kind of feel this is the ultimate statement, the last kind of word we're going to make as far as albums go. Like it just feels like this is the record we've been we've been kind of heading towards for a long time like this is the end game for this for this stage of fucked up